Hey guys, Jonathan Gray here with the Empower Network, and today I want to talk to you about corneal ulcers, which is uh, basically an abrasion or scratch in your dog's cornea, the clear part of their eye. So, um, oftentimes dogs can get these from scratching at their ears and missing and then nicking at their eye. Other times it can come from them running into a bush and you know getting poked by a sharp branch or scratched by a sharp branch. And then also, um, if your dog has a run-in with a cat, this can also be a possibility. Uh, the only way to detect that your dog may have a corneal ulcer is they'll probably be squinting and occasionally have some inflammation of the um, of the white, the sclera, the white part of the eye. So you know, kind of bloodshot eyes and squinting. So if you see that, generally it would be the best thing to uh, take them to a veterinary ophthalmologist. Now, once you're at the veterinary ophthalmologist, the only way they can be sure is with a fluorescein stain that they put in the eye and if there is in fact an ulcer the light, the bright green color will stick to that portion of the eye and it won't rinse out. So if that happens uh, depending on the severity of the ulcer the vet will give you a cone probably a really big one you might have to help your dog eat for a while because it's imperative that nothing else hits the eye and then some antibiotics. Pretty simple stuff. However if you don't take care of it and it gets deeper or gets infected because, you know, like our skin, the top layer is really strong and sturdy and, you know, can handle a lot of bacteria. But underneath that, it's, you know, it's, um, it's very susceptible to infection. So if the cornea gets infected or if it gets, you know, deeper, it, the cornea can actually melt. It's pretty gross, but the cornea can actually melt or it can just get deeper. And once it gets down to a certain level, you know, the top level is the epithelial layer, then there's the stroma, which is the middle, and then there's the um, decimentous membrane. I don't know, there's a lot of medical terms that thrown at you. I'm not very good at pronouncing them. Anyways, so once it gets down to that bottom layer, the cornea cannot heal. It might potentially heal over, but it's highly unlikely. Um, but it definitely won't heal from that part back up to the top. So if it gets to that point, you're beyond just simple antibiotics and um, a cone. A lot of times a vet will take some of your dog's blood and um, separate the plasma from the red blood cells because it's actually very uh, beneficial for healing. But most of and even that won't really get it past that point once it's there. Um, so what ends up happening is your doctor has to do surgery at this point because that layer, that last layer is so thin if your dog sneezed really hard or had a was a little bit constipated, had a hard poop, their eye could pop, like literally rupture. It, it's crazy. So what the doctor ends up doing is you take them in, you know, they do the pre the prep work, and then they take this like pink part, this uh, conjunctival mucous membrane, and they cut a little piece off, and then they rotate it on, and they stitch a little meat flap onto that hole on the cornea. It looks pretty gross, but if it's done right, that meat flap will like kind of get clear and shrink and move off to the side, so your dog can generally see. Um, definitely get a vet who knows what they're doing, otherwise you'll get a nice little meatball and they'll technically blind your dog. Um, the surgery is relatively uh, simple. It takes, I, I want to say it takes about three hours. I was involved with maybe about seven of them. And uh, the bottom line, though, it's a lot more expensive to go that route. So if you see your dog squinting or favoring one eye in any way, or if they have ear infections or anything that makes them scratchy to their face a lot, make sure you get taken care of because the alternative is expensive. And also, it's pretty gross. Like, if you want, you can check out my blog. There's some pictures of what corneal ulcers look like in the link below. And um, you'll see it. It's nasty, and you don't want your dog's eye exploding because at that point, if your dog's eye does indeed rupture, they just got to remove it, and then you got a little one-eyed Pete or whatever. So don't make your dog a pirate. Hope this was useful. Thank you so much. Bye.